We've had a few days to get more information and find out more about the assassination attempt on President Trump. Let's talk to a former FBI agent. Harry Trombitis joins us. Hey, Harry, how are you? Hello, Harry. Good morning. Hey, hey, good morning. Hey, so your thoughts these last few days. First, take us back to Saturday when you saw what went down and then what we've kind of learned or speculated on since. Yeah, it, it was... Um... Very shocking and and I would say disappointing. Um, you know, I know that uh, the rhetoric had been heating up, and our country has been so polarized uh, for actually for quite a while now. But, and I know the FBI director had indicated even back in October that all of the threat areas that we were concerned about uh, were extremely elevated and uh, especially the, in this uh, political area. And so um, we knew that things were, you know, at an explosive level. Uh, and then when I saw that, um, you know, like I said, I was just uh, so disappointed and I was very thankful for the quick action of, um, of the Secret Service, uh, at least initially. Um, you know, uh, what they were able to do to protect uh, the former president. And uh, then I learned of the, you know, death of the one individual and the injury of the other two. Right. And, I mean, that really put, you know, uh, a real dark cloud over things. And and since then, you know, I, I always am careful about uh, judging too quickly because I know there's a, a real desire to get information out. Uh, you know, the media wants it, sure. the public wants it. Oftentimes that information can be wrong. Um, but now that I've had a chance to look at, um, you know, some of the investigation, everything that's been conducted, um, you know, usually in my opinion, the, the Secret Service are the best in the world at what they do, uh, their protection details. But clearly in this particular instance, uh, something was missed, and whether it was um, an area that the local police department uh, was supposed to handle, uh, I'm not 100% sure of that yet. But bottom line is, it was it was a huge miss, and um, we could have lost uh, uh, our uh, Republican candidate. Yeah. No and, and, you know, Harry, uh, social media is going to do what social media does. It's possible. There's no conspiracy. There's no. It was just plain and simple incompetence or mistakes were made. Looking back in hindsight, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be everything is a conspiracy now. And when it could just be a failure of certain policies that weren't implemented. But then the director, this Cheadle, in that interview yesterday, boy, that she did not come off looking well with the slope of the roof and why there weren't secret service. I mean, there are some questions here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, addressing, uh, you know, the conspiracy theories, um, those happen all the time. Right. And you're going to have people that, you know, have something in their mind and they think, you know, it's got to be this. And they, they really don't follow the facts. Uh, they just jump to a conclusion and. You know, the uh, FBI is in charge of the investigation, and to this point, to my knowledge, they've not uncovered any other individuals that were working with um, uh, the uh, crooks, uh, the the shooter. Uh, and uh, there was also an indication that uh, there was uh, – Iran was uh, potentially involved. Right. Uh, there's there's no indication that Crooks had any connection to to them at all or to him at all. And Cheadle um, disappointed not only me, but I know several former Secret Service agents, and they also were very upset uh, at um, the things that she has said. And and it, you know it sound it sounded. Um, you know, like almost like they were trying to pass the buck a little bit and and uh, not take acceptance of responsibility. And uh, that's disappointing. And I, I know that the the agency is a great agency. And I, when I heard some of those comments, I was just 
a little disappointed. Harry Trombitis is with us, and he's a former FBI agent. So, Harry, when they do this investigation, if they find out either it was local, Secret Service, whatever it is, someone dropped the ball, when they do the in- investigation and they have their findings, if there was the ball was dropped, are we talking about some people get – obviously, it's going to help – security down the road but for this instant and is someone going to get fired could someone do jail time what what happens if someone's found negligent in this well uh to my knowledge um there would be no criminal charges uh based on what i've heard anyway um again i'm not intimately involved in the investigation so i can't uh, certainly make that determination at this point but just based on what i've read i I think it was just something that, um, you know, if a ball was dropped uh, and I've read a a story or two about apparently there were officers that tried to make contact with with crooks, uh, but he turned a weapon on them and, you know, they were not in a position to engage him at that time. So the officers dropped back down off the roof and then the um, shots from crooks occurred shortly thereafter. So. You know, it's one of those situations where, you know, the officer that apparently saw crooks up on the roof uh, didn't have an opportunity to engage him um, and, uh, you know, was protecting his own life, which, you know, certainly I I guess is understandable. Um, So I don't know that that amounts to a situation where criminal charges could be filed. Um, but um, I just think it's more the planning that went in to the event, why there weren't um, people up on that rooftop, um, law enforcement officers up on the rooftop, you know, and, and the Cheadle had indicated that um, apparently because of the slope of the roof, that was one of the concerns they had. Well, they had their own snipers up on a sloped roof. So, I mean, it, it, it just didn't make sense to me and, and, and to a lot of other people. So, again, I don't think there'll be criminal charges that come out of this. Um, I just uh, I think we just need to wait and see how the investigation ends up. Who was the FBI director when you served? Because I know you've been retired for a, a decade or so, a little bit more even. Uh, who was the oh, FBI here. director when you served? And have you seen a change in the FBI or a lot of the uh, the DOJ, the CIA. Is there been a big change in the decade that you've been out of it, do you feel, when you look at it today? Well, uh, yes. I mean, I had probably four or five different uh, directors okay. during my time, and I was actually on William wow. Webster's uh, security detail back in the day. And uh, so we had sessions. We had Louis Free. You know, um, and and the recent uh, individuals that we've had, um, so um, Comey and and now Christopher Ray. So I've seen a lot of changes, but that's based on our priorities. Back when I came in in 1983, uh, the wow. number one priority for the FBI was violent crime. And now over the years, things have changed to the to a point where violent crime is no longer the number one priority. We've got uh, terrorism, domestic terrorism, uh, international terrorism, foreign counterintelligence, uh, cyber crime, um, all these different things, crimes against children that have now taken a higher priority uh, over violent crime. So those are the changes that I've seen. And, um, you know, again, I I deal with the FBI on a regular basis, uh, both current agents. My daughter is actually an agent in New York right now, but um, I I deal with uh, uh, the local agents around here, and I I still have a network of former agents, and I can promise you and and everybody else that they are working hard every single day to keep people safe and our country secure. Um, The fact that we have not had a terrorism incident here in our country for a period of time now is really due to the hard work of the men and women involved yeah. in me. And, um, you know, we our goal now is really to try to disrupt um, these things before anybody gets hurt and 
you know, sometimes that means we have to move before we have, um, you know, probable cause to make an arrest. Uh, so it's a it's a fine line if, if something is imminent and it's about to happen, even if we don't have the probable cause to make an arrest, we're going to go talk to them and interrupt it and and do everything we can to prevent anything from occurring. So, you know, obviously our our preference is to, um, you know, go through the legal system and and uh, hold people accountable, you know, that way. But um, sometimes you've got to act before you really have everything, uh, you know, together. And, yeah. and our agents do that every day. So, hey, Harry, in your opinion, you know, we had the George Floyd riots where, you know, the I think the city hall of Seattle was like, taken over by protesters for weeks. You had stuff January 6th, an assassination attempt on a former president. Is is this political unrest going to continue, in your opinion, or does this event make everything die down and make people realize, hey, we're taking this way too far? Yeah, I, unfortunately, I think um, it may have calmed down for 24 hours, but uh, I think it's picking back up already, and it's going to be elevated again. Um, I know we're concerned about uh, people trying to um, uh, continue what crooks had had attempted. Uh, there are people out there that you know may decide that they need to finish the job, and and uh, so we're very concerned about any of those characters. And then certainly uh, paybacks. Um, yeah. Okay, you did that to us. Now we're going to do something to you. And you know it's a it's a very frightening uh, political climate right now. And I'd like to say that things will calm down, uh, but I just don't see it happening. Um, you know, the bottom line is most Americans uh, really want to uh, exercise their right to vote. That's how they pick and choose a candidate. Um, and we just have a small minority of uh, people who are, I guess, zealous, and they want to uh, try to take matters into their own hands. and. Those are the ones we have to try to uh, safeguard and and uh, you know uh, pay attention to. Well, Harry, we appreciate the time. Yeah, we have to, man, that yeah, was good. Good stuff, and thanks for the information. Okay, and I would just remind everybody. Uh, you know, we always say, if you see something, say something. And we need the citizens uh, every day to let us know if they hear, if they see something that doesn't look right. Let law enforcement know. So that we can follow up, follow up on it, and hopefully prevent anything from occurring like what we experienced on Saturday. Absolutely, Harry. Thanks right so much. On. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, guys. Bye now.